regular meeting. Uh, the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business, effect, or interest is discussed or acted upon. In compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, the Highland Park Board of Education has closed notice of this meeting, setting forth the time, date, and location to be submitted for publication to the Home News Tribune and Star Ledger. And post on the board's website at least 48 hours in advance of this meeting. Members of the public who wish to address the board will be given the opportunity to do so before the board adjourns the evening. Denise Ms. Kassama? Here. Ms. Holman? Here. Ms. Gowan? Here. Ms. Seth McFadden, Dean Nicola? She's there with Megan to all the others. Ms. Bruce? Here. Mr. Ross, Ross is at the first floor, Rich? Here. Ms. Morphy? Here. She's going to come back to Michelle because she's in the world. Is she here? Yeah. Ms. McFadden, Dean Nicola? Here. And uh, for the sake of the board and um, for the public, we also have with us on the uh, on the dais here, <laughs> Elizabeth Weinstein from um, the Bush Law Office, uh, being with us today. Okay, pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So this is um, a, a voting meeting, um, so we have no communications, but we will go ahead and approve minutes of our hybrid regular public meeting for August 7th, I guess for our last meeting. So I move that we accept those minutes from the August 7th hybrid regular public meeting. Second. Group that we hired to run the fire 
um, the, the, the phone and internet and everything like that run that wire. So the good news is we've done some, you know, the back end work. So it should be rocking and rolling within a couple days, and then the other two should be coming, and we should be all set. So we're not probably going to be able to start kindergarten out there on September 8th. However, we have a plan B, so not to worry, but um, within by mid-September, hopefully, definitely before preschool starts in October, we'll be good to go with everybody settled accordingly. So uh, we have to adjust a little bit, but um, at this point, we're not the only district in need of modular classrooms. So. Um, unfortunately, we had no skin in the game to try to wheel and deal in, uh, in that realm. But they're here and we're excited. Um, another thing that you may have seen at the Bartle Playground, we're moving and grooving, they started laying the surface today. So they put that, uh, it's like almost looks like a rubbery cushion. I mean, it's pretty, I, mean, I say like this, it was like thick. They were putting it on like uh, they do concrete and stuff, and it's like super, super thick. But it'll be really nice, so nice and cushiony for them. Um, no more of the wood chips. I don't know if you saw, but there's a ramp up for accessibility, so it's fully ADA compliant. Um, it is re uh, remarkable. It's absolutely remarkable. I see students, kids coming outside going, we want to play the new playground. So hopefully uh, it takes three days for that to cure, and then we're all set. And I don't know if you also noticed around Bartle, but they added uh, some additional fencing. We have uh, some ABA students, autism students, moving up from Irving to Bartle, and some of them are um, elopers, meaning they can run, so we wanted to secure that back area because we wanted to give them equal access to the play space um, for all of our students, so to prevent them from being able to run outside of that area, we've completely gated it in. Plus, um, for that play structure, I think it's really nice that parents then have like a nice gated area for the play structure, similar to what it is at Irving as well. So, so that's all done. There's been some new HVAC work. Um, at middle high school, um, a new chiller put in, so we're, we're rocking and rolling with, our, with, with everything that's going on. Um, so those are some updates on the front for of opening of schools. Um, and lastly, I wanted to share that um, if you were maybe listening to anything that I had to say in the late spring, <laughs> some, to some of the presentations, I did share that um, there is an estate that came up with funding. So uh, Mr. Kushner was a community member who passed away, unfortunately, and left um, a large estate uh, for, from him and his deceased mother, and left the majority of the estate to nonprofits in Highland Park. And the Ed Foundation and the HP Booster Clubs uh, submitted applications or grants to receive some of this estate money. The three projects that we put in uh, were for the High School Environmental Sustainability Center, so basically an outdoor greenhouse uh, for learning and learning about more of uh, sustainable practices. At Irving, an outdoor learning pavilion. So we had, fed, we had in the budget to fence off that area on 11th, um, right by where the gym is, so that we had extra play space, knowing that we were giving that up for two years for the modular classrooms but we will be receiving money to have an outdoor learning pavilion. So we're gonna put an additional play structure and an actual covered, not fully covered, but top covered pavilion with a concrete pad and some tables. Um, I, in addition, I spoke to our director of facilities and tech manager, and we're gonna be able to run um, an access point out there so that if our students needed internet and wanted just to come sit in a covered area just to work, you know, in, a, in an outdoor space, they have that as well. So we're, we're thinking a little outside the box too to service the, our students and the community. And lastly, the baseball field. We'll get a beautiful and much needed renovation and upgrade. So we will have the Ida Kushner Environmental Sustainability Center, and the Ida Kushner Outdoor Learning Pavilion, and the Ida Kushner Baseball Field. So the Attorney General has approved that work. Um, the next thing we have to wait for the email on what the paperwork we have to submit to the attorney, and then they're going to have a public event where they give out the funds. So I will keep everybody updated so that we can celebrate um, this great donation to the district for three amazing areas for our students. And all, I say three buildings, so middle and high school I combine because they get a new baseball field for both the middle school and high school teams. Um, so that is sort of the, a quick update of what's going on getting ready for the start of school. Next, I'd like to um, introduce our process and the big highlight tonight, which is, um, as you know from our last board meeting, we had two board vacancies.
So a huge thank you to Mr. Krieger and Mr. Woodward for all they've done to serve um, the Highland Park community, the students and staff over the years. Tonight we're hoping to fill the vacancies, so we have three candidates that we will bring up. Each candidate has uh, five minutes or less, you don't have to use all five minutes, but you have five minutes or less um, to um, provide the board and the community out there with some background information, including why you're you know, running for the board vacancy position. We gave a couple of questions in terms of what information the board would like to learn about the candidates tonight. So I will call each uh, community member up either to the podium. I think we have one on Zoom who is with us virtually to give their um, their address to the board and the community. And then what will happen afterward is uh, we will recess to executive session where we'll talk about the, uh, the candidates and then come back out and um, move forward with, with the process. Okay? All right, so let me get my list. So the first up, so we're gonna do an alphabetical order because I'm a teacher and that's what we do, alphabetical order. So tonight, um, I'd like to first bring up Mr. Backenroth, Daniel Backenroth, but I don't see him. Is he on Zoom? No, I'm on Zoom. Okay. All right, next I'd like to bring up Mr. Dan Beatty, who is with us.
Given this perspective, I am someone who always wants to frame communities as assets. Common Park is a diverse community with various languages, religions, and cultures. For such a small community, there are a number of community and religious organizations, as well as records itself, to draw on in improving our town and schools. I consider the Universal DK expansion a tremendous resource, which gives access to those who wouldn't have opportunities for early childhood um, education otherwise. I also consider the dedicated teachers and administrators an enormous resource. I would say the challenges are mostly due to being a small district and the resulting financial limitations. With less funding across schools, it means that offerings are necessarily going to be restricted. Um, <clears throat> many times when people speak of equity, they actually refer to equality. Equality is sameness and often does not recognize difference. Equality usually considers a focus on outcomes such as achievement um, and just the same test scores. But this perspective is very limited. For example, while girls have now on average achieved equality, <clears throat> if not out achieved boys in math and science, they still experience the exclusionary nature of classrooms in these subjects. Equity is a much more challenging endeavor. It includes monitoring resources, treatment, and outcomes. Fundamentally, I bring a view to equity that considers history and structures that contribute to current inequities. Education did not produce or sustain inequities individually. Therefore, we have to change systems like funding, tracking, discipline, and the nature of instruction, which have produced the inequities that we now must address. Um, given my comments, I believe I have the most to offer on the committees of equity and excellence, uh, curriculum instruction, and personnel and communication. I think I have a lot to contribute to support the district's efforts to continue uh, working towards the goal. and Bartman, who is uh, with us remotely. So, and if you could, um, up on there, I see, there, thank you. Okay, you, you have the floor. Thank you, and thank you so much for your flexibility for allowing me to take part via Zoom. Uh, I'm visiting my parents in Minneapolis, Minnesota right now, um, where I attended public schools. We moved to Highland Park 15 years ago, and one of the reasons that we chose to live in Highland Park is that we wanted to live in a diverse, walkable, supportive community, and that's what Highland Park is. Um, we, I have a fourth grader, a rising fourth grader, Bartle, and my son is going to be entering kindergarten right uh, in the fall. Um, and especially as we saw through COVID, I think that uh, we really recognized how important the school system is in our community, how responsive, how responsive schools are so important. And when these positions opened up, I decided that I wanted to try to give back in order to be part of that responsive community that I love so much in Highland Park. Um, I have 15 years experience working in government relations. I actually started as a community organizer, working with a bunch of different organizations, people from different backgrounds, in order to try to achieve the same goals. Um, whether that has been expanding the earned income tax credit, fighting for a more equitable uh, school funding during the Christie administration, fighting to get uh, additional lead funding, to remove lead from, to remediate lead from poor and, um, in poor communities. Um, one of the things that I do professionally and I try to do in my personal life as well is to build bridges, to bring people together in order to form consensus. And one of the things that I would like to do um, if I were to be able to join the board is to work to build consensus to uh, build bridges within our community, which is a diverse community that has all kinds of different people living in one small town, which is why we love it so much. Um, on the question of educational equity, um, you know, what the previous speaker said is correct. People get confused between equity and equality. Um, educational equity means that people need to get, that everyone needs to get the resources that they need in order to achieve their potential. And that means that some people may need 
more resources than those who have more at home in order to achieve their potential. But that means that everyone does get resources, but they get distributed even, um, differently. And that's one of the things in Highland Park, being that we are a small school district, uh, we don't have the same amount of give that a larger school district has when it comes to financial constraints. Um, and that's something that I understand that we are going to have to uh, prioritize what we care about and equity is something that I think we all agree is extraordinarily important because we want all of the children in our district to succeed and to reach their potential and whatever we need to do in order to support that, to think outside the box and make sure that the kids have what they need is extraordinarily important. Um, like I've said before, the reason we lived and we decided to live, move to Highland Park um, is because one of the reasons is the school system. Uh, there are very, New Jersey has some of the most segregated schools in the country and the fact that it is a diverse school district was extraordinarily important to us. Uh, that brings a great amount of strength. You have an involved community, a small, a small walkable uh, community. You have wonderful teachers. I have the experience that we've had with all of the teachers through Irving and Bartle so far has been exemplary. Um, wonderful, caring school staff, responsive staff and administration. These are all things that are extraordinarily important. Um, and those same thing, those same strengths are also some of our challenges in that we are a small school district. We do have a wide array of economic differences of people from different backgrounds. And you can, while we all want what's best for our kids, we have to make choices, and that can be extraordinarily difficult, especially in a small, very involved community. Um, of the several committees, you know, given my uh, work experience, um, I think that personnel communication or uh, curriculum and instruction would probably, um, or equity and excellence in policy would be the places that I would um, fit in best. Uh, I am good at working with people. I am, uh, because of my work, I'm also, I understand the way that government systems work within the state. Um, when there becomes new funding available, when there are new grants to apply for, um, ways to, uh, get funding, like there, for, re, for example, um, the state just created a fund to do high impact tutoring for third and fourth graders. These are the sorts of things that I am, uh, I have policy expertise in these kinds of relationship buildings and identifying these levels, these kinds of funds in order to bring more of that into the district. I know that we can think outside the box and give it some of our limitations, which are also our strengths, I really do think that our schools are vitally important and that our kids have wonderful opportunities here and we just want to make sure that everyone is getting what they need. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I see that Mr. Beckroth has showed up, so thank you so much. Um, so we went in alphabetical order. And so your first name is first, so I'd like to call up uh, Daniel Backenroth as our last candidate speech. Hi, I'm Daniel. Thank you. Um, I've kind of stayed with that kind of answers all the questions. So. Um, I applied for appointment to the Board of Education because I would like to join the Board of Education for all students, enabling all students to attain their potential. As a parent of three kids that have been in the HP school, I know firsthand that our district has many students, including wonderful, engaged children, parents, teachers, and grandchildrens. I also know that our district faces many challenges. One is the lasting effects of the pandemic, which set many students back significantly at important times in their educational development. Another is the challenge of effectively using technology, like Chromebooks and AI, to improve outcomes. I think I would be a valuable addition to the board for a few reasons. First, as a statistician in my day job, I have quantitative and analytic skills that I could use to help the board set policies and evaluate administration. 
Second, it is important to me to take a collaborative approach to listen to the other members of the board and to parents, students, teachers, and administrators, and to work together with all of you. Though I care deeply about education and about this district, and I am enthusiastic about putting in the time to understand the issues facing the district and working with you and with the administration to set a path forward. Educational equity is defined by the national equity project as each child receiving what they need to develop to their full academic and social potential. I think that should be the ultimate goal of all schools. To advance that goal, the district needs to continue to work on providing a safe learning environment where all students feel valued and supported and where differentiated instruction is provided to make sure that all students are appropriately challenged. I would be happy to serve on any of the board committees. I am most interested in serving on the policy, curriculum, and instruction or equity and excellence committees, where I feel my quantitative and analytic background could help the board and administration set and achieve appropriate goals. Thank you. Thank you. So that concludes my superintendent's report. Um, so I just need a few minutes. There's a um, a bunch of people on Zoom. So what I need to do is put all of the people if you're on Zoom. Unless you're a board member, you're going to go into the virtual waiting room while we recess to executive session, um, and then we'll reconvene and I will stop the waiting room and you can all come back in. So um, if the board can recess to executive session, but just give me a few minutes. Oh, we're gonna move to recess. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, thank you. Okay. I there a couple seconds more. Um, so I will uh, be resolved pursuant to the Sunshine Act, NJSA 10 code 4 12 and 13. The Highland Park Board of Education will now meet in closed session to discuss matters related to new board candidates. These exemptions are permitted to be discussed in closed session in accordance with NJSA 10 code 4 13. Information regarding the board's closed session discussion will be disclosed to the public as soon as the need for confidentiality no longer exists. So now I move that we recess to executive session. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So for those of you who are here in the public, we're going to leave. We're going to go across for a few minutes. Uh, we're going to meet with our lawyer, and then we're going to come back in here and do a formal vote. Okay, so hang in there. Okay. First, from the point of view of process, once we've, we've uh, nominated and moved two people to join our board, those two people will then be um, asked to join and swear in and vote for the rest of the meeting. So um, that's how the process is going to go. And I'm going to say up front, too, that we very much appreciate that you, you know, stepped out there and, <laughs> and offered to, to take a, board, a, uh, a position on the board. Um, all three candidates are very well qualified, and um, we really appreciate the effort you, you know, you're taking. And regardless of how this vote goes tonight, we really hope that um, whoever's not on the board tonight will Definitely, you know, we encourage you to run next time or to keep an eye out because appointments pop up as uh, people's lives, you know, we need them to move on. So um, again, thank you for for yeah. applying and being on the board. Sorry, much for pausing. Uh, our lawyer asked me, wait a second until she comes uh, out and joins us. Oh, oh absolutely. absolutely. I'm sorry, I didn't interrupt you. No, 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 I'm trying to take it. Okay, take a second. <laughs> she said, wait a second. Okay.
So then she goes down to get two pieces of paper here. Yes. Uh, Miss Castell Dunn, I vote for Ann Barman and Dan Beatty. Ms. Coleman? Yes, I vote for uh, Ann Barman and Dan Beatty. Can I say something? I just wanted to say that I was extremely impressed by all the candidates, but especially noting here um, Dan Beatty's education background, um, exceptionally strong in his relationships with the school district. He's already established a uh, deep knowledge and commitment to educational equity, and impressed me with uh, her emphasis on her long history in government and work building relationships um, through her experience working in government and her focus on equitable school funding advocacy, um, her understanding of being a small school district and what that means in terms of financing and her emphasis on her ability to build bridges and consensus. So looking forward to hopefully being able to welcome both of those applicants to the board. Ms. Gowan. Uh, Ms. Vardaman and Mr. Is it Beatty or Batty? Beatty. It's Beatty, sorry. Just Beatty. sound like Batty. Yeah. <laughs> a lifelong problem. I think a lot of people say Batty, and I've heard it. Sorry. Beatty. Ms. McFadden, Dean Nicola. Yes, I vote for Dan Beatty and for Ann Wharton. Ms. Proust. Um, I also vote for uh, Dan Beatty and Ann Wharton. Mr. Roslevich? Vote for Dan Beatty and Ann Fardman. Ms. Voorhees. And I also vote for Dan Beatty and Ann Fardman. So welcome Dan Beatty and Ann come to our board. Come and join us. <laughs> <laughs> now you're stuck. <laughs> That's the immediate transition. <laughs> Oh, you have to swear it. Oh, you have to go to the podium first, yeah. And Anne can go to the virtual podium. Yeah. And you'll go to the virtual podium. Okay. Anne, can you unmute yourself, please? For the swearing in? Yeah. Okay. You'll both recite after me, okay? I do solemnly, solemnly affirm. I do solemnly affirm. I do solemnly affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution, support the Constitution of, the of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution, and Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And I will bear true faith. And I will bear true faith. And I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And, alle and, allegiance, to and allegiance to the same. And to the governments established in the United States. And to the governments, and the governments established in the United States. And this state. And this state. And this state. Under authority of the people. Under authority. Under authority of the people. And I do affirm. And I do affirm. And I do affirm that I possess the qualifications. That I possess, possess the qualifications prescribed by law. Prescribed by law. Prescribed by law for the office of member of a board of education. The office. The office yeah. of member of a board, board of education. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. Partially. And justly perform. And justly. And justly perform all the duties of that office. All the duties of that office. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Congratulations.
process is going to be that we'll uh, go through board committee reports, agenda items. We will open to public comment, and then we will uh, vote on for that tonight. So that's that's the plan. We're going to start with uh, curriculum and instruction. So curriculum and instruction has not met since last month. Our next meeting is next Tuesday. Um, our curriculum instruction agenda items include approval of the field trips request. There's one field trip request for robotics in the high school. Um, and the approval of some new university graduates, students for teaching internships, and junior practicum and observation. That concludes my report. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, will we meet equity and excellence? Right, we did not meet. We will be meeting next month. So that's your report. Okay. Um, same is true for finance facilities. We uh, reported on that last meeting. Um, we have a pretty lengthy agenda, a list of agenda items. I'm going to go through those. Um, we have a lot of um, approval. Oh, we first want our approval bill list, so they're all for July um, and August. So the bill list for uh, part of July, one um, and one for August. There is a uh, cafeteria bill list for August. Um, and then we go back and we're approving treasurer's reports for April and for May. Um, if you remember those, those when we were looking to finish up last year, those were outsourced um, to get us uh, up to date. So we have number five is to May, the treasurer's report. Uh, then we have board secretary reports that uh, affirms that we're not in violation of any budgetary line in our reports. Um, right, those are all certain certifications. We have approval of budget transfers, again for April and for May. And a travel and expense reimbursement report. And then we're uh, voting on contractors for professional services. So we have Summit Speech School for um, services for students of the deaf um, and um, for science professional development, professional development science, and for Ganley Consulting, um, that is coaching for middle and high school teachers. And we have approval of additional extended school year. Uh, that's really a change of amount because we approved it in the past. One new at this replacement for eating autism. Um, and the river opposite of that, we have some in district placements as well. So both the Mellon and South Brunswick have students that they are sending to have part of their education, so there's money attached to that. Um, and then we have the information about non public security funds, which is always a little bit challenging for us. But in the case of this, we are accepting the money from the government um, and then authorizing the fund allocation from the non-public security funds um, for nursing, security, technology, and textbook allocations, which is schools, and non-public nursing services um, through Ed Services Commission. And then we were able to um, move that we accept the recommendation superintendent to approve our budget and plan for our preschool program. Um, so that's obviously been a long, long in coming. We weren't part of that. Um, proposals for flooring in the high school, and accepting a new proposal, LPJ Chamber Solutions. And, um, and the last one is uh, we're moving source for teachers is now ESS Northeast. And we're going to be looking to have them help us with substitute nurses. So there's some attachment for that. Are there any questions on the finance Some of the items. 
Uh, oh, I did want to talk about, I know, this is a, this is a good one. Um, safe to say, we are going to hire a computer science teacher. Oh, wait, Christina is proposing that we prove <laughs> 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 I love the enthusiasm. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's a long day of work. <laughs> um, so I, Christina, I want to say a few words about her, but the proposal is that we hire her uh, effective 60 days from now, more or less. Um, that she will start, she will finish this semester um, with work designing the new AP, the new computer science curriculum, the new classes she might want to offer. Um, I know she's very interested in certificate or certificate programs that students can use shortly after they graduate, in addition to AP computer science on her, you know, all the more academic ones. Um, of course, since she's coming so late, we are not able to offer AP computer science this year, but hopefully we'll be back next year. And Christina shared that she's also interested in the dual enrollment program with Middlesex, and that she, it seems likely to bring her qualifications that she will be able to get qualified to do it. Did you want to share anything more detail, Christina? Yeah, just that it is a little unconventional to hire a teacher that wouldn't be teaching students right out of the gate, but because of the timing, um, it, that's just how it worked out. We thought it would be a great opportunity. So curriculum instruction and equity and let's be on the lookout for course approval forms uh, for the courses that she'll be designing. So she's going to work with our STEM supervisor, Ms. Saka, to develop those courses. We'll approve them and then be able to offer them. So the course approval process will probably begin maybe a little bit before she officially starts through uh, Ms. Saka and the high school. Um, that way that's approved and then she can hit the ball rolling with designing curriculum. Um, she'll also be able to at least see students in, in there uh, doing some independent study projects or WISE, we can substitute some, some support with that. So if we have students that are doing independent study in computer science or AP comp sci, she'll be able to assist with that when she starts, but it won't be a formal classes like in, you know, that are um, more traditional classes until January. So the sooner we can get those classes approved, we can start um, marketing them, so to speak, to the students so that if they want to adjust their winter schedules or their second semester schedules, they'll have an opportunity to um, open that up with their school counselors to take some of those course offerings. So um, I predict that maybe those courses might be a little smaller um, out of the gate for the spring semester, but at least they'll be there and being offered. Uh, she's interested in video game design or robotics and things like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk to the students when they're back to school, because no one's available now that wants to talk to us, on what they would like to see as course offerings as well. So we wanna get their input too in the process as we develop um, more robust STEM course offerings. Fantastic, and a big thank you to you for uh, finding this person at the, sort of at the last minute. Uh, you know, we didn't have anybody in what, early August. <laughs> it's, it's just it's a great hire, and they're difficult to find. Um, so that's very exciting. Um, another so going over the agenda, almost everything is self-explanatory and not earth-shattering, except for the people that are, of course, being hired or not hired or moving between schools. Um, number six is uh, worthy of note: the approval of a family school liaison at Bartle. That is a new position, correct? Uh, parallel to the one that we had at the middle school, which has been very successful. Um, so that's great that we're able to do that. Let's see. Um, as always, Dr. Nicosia has done a fantastic job at recruiting and hiring highly qualified people, which is just wonderful to see. Let me see if there's anything else that's particularly notable. Uh, number 19, um, approval of stipends for teacher leaders. Is it, do we, do we do this every year? I'm so sorry, my, my brain is a little fuzzy. Do we, have we had teacher leaders so in the past? We did it last year, so okay. we used some of our Title IIA funds, which is federal money for professional development, and we use that as an in-house instructional coaching model. Okay. So the three uh, personnel that you'll be voting on for my recommendation, um, had the, uh, there was a posting for the position, there's an interview process and then selected uh, through the title funding um, with a couple of people on a committee and their role is uh, either during prep periods or mostly after school is a lot of instructional coaching. We give them release time to do peer observations um, and, and to assist with that. So it's just another layer of coaching that we provide to the teachers. So you'll see there's one at Irving, one at Bartle, and then a shared one between middle and high school. It's great to see such highly qualified teachers uh, chosen, recommended to us for hire. Um, okay, extra compensation. Da, 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 da. Uh, number 25 is approval of the before-after-school program staff. 
and here they are. And um, you can all see them on the agenda, <laughs> but it's nice to have that nailed down. And I think that is all the um, significantly notable items. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought I... Any questions on personnel? Um, I have a quick question. Is the new computer science teacher also in my part? But we all want to hear it is. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for that hire. I just want to second what I'm saying that it, it is a really difficult decision to build. Um, and I really appreciate the class that they're starting, even if it's not traditional, you know. Um, but will they, I didn't see on their uh, resume that they had the AP certification. Will they definitely have that for Yeah, so she doesn't have the certification, so that's actually part of the work she's going to be doing when she starts with those in the late fall is going to get the certification. Okay. So she'll have it okay. way early in advance to actually even develop that class more robustly as well. Great. So that is part of her work. So instead of paying someone over the summer to go for the training, she'll just do it as part of her work um, until she starts classes in January, February. That's great, thank you. Um, and, and one more question about the, um, the student leaders, the, I mean the teacher leaders. Why is the middle and high school split? That would Only one person applied for the position. Only one person applied for the position. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other personnel questions? Okay, then. Uh, okay, policies, which we don't have any. We're meeting and then policies, but they will be coming. Um, so we move to public comment. And on the part of education, welcome to public participation and has reserved this time for your comments. Board policy 0164 and 0167 established to regulate the right of the public to participate in public meetings. And as always, this is um, three minutes per speaker um, and uh, on any topic. So if you would like to speak, please, if you're in the room, you can speak first and we have something going to the podium. Uh, read your name and your address. And then we'll have you please sign in. Cost. 
without a clear justification or evidence, evident enhancement in services. This increase has not translated into additional programming. Equally concerning is the observation that there haven't been corresponding wage increases for the dedicated staff who play a pivotal role in the student's experience. In fact, in the site's manager's pay was decreased by 15%. In light of this, we believe that any rise in cost should lead to an expansion of services and increased pay for the hardworking and dedicated staff. It is our hope that this, these important matters will be taken into consideration when considering both the SNAP policy and the program as it is developed further. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you so much. Um, we move to the uh, public for for uh, uh, Elizabeth, you want to unmute? Oh yes, sorry, thank you. Um, hi, my name is Elizabeth Brown Greenberg, I'm at 61 South Avenue. I have a son at Bartle who has attended ASP since kindergarten. I too am speaking out tonight to oppose the administration's decision to cut SNAP from our after school programs even though they decided to raise rates by 25% and hire two new administrators for the program. The district has always provided SNAP to kids in ASP and should continue to do so. It's simply the right thing to do, and I think we all know that. The administration also chose to cut the pay for Ms. Carla and Ms. Jackie by 15% and to not raise the very low wages of the staff who work with our children day after day. I ask the district to please reverse the decision to cut Ms. Carla and Ms. Jackie's pay and to reinstate providing snacks to the children. Their pay cuts, as well as cutting snack, give the appearance to myself and to many other families that the district is retaliating with the lost fight to outsource ASP. I certainly hope that is not the case and that you will reinstate snack and their pay at its previous rate. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Abby? Hi, this is uh, Abby Stern Cardinal. Uh, I live uh, on Harper Street. I just wanted to uh, also say that I hope that um, SNAP can be added to the after school program. Uh, one concern I have is that um, it really disadvantages the families who take advantage of free and reduced lunch, and we really need to make sure that the um, program uh, allows for. Uh, equitable treatment of all children. Uh, if those children are singled out and given snack, but others aren't, it really uh, singles them out. It becomes more obvious, and that's a huge problem. Um, I do hope that the budget can accommodate, given increased uh, costs that uh, will go toward the administrators, but also hopefully can cover the snack that was previously provided uh, for all the children in the program. Thank you. Thank you. Else? Seeing one, um, we're going to move on. I, I would like to talk a little bit about the after school program, but I think we're going to have no business. So we'll move forward on our, I do appreciate all the comments that we hear about, um, and we're going to bring it up on our old business. So we're going to uh, instead move forward on board action items. Can I interrupt for just a second? Yeah. I'm sorry to be rude. Um, before we, I mean, we're voting on after school staff. Right. On the personnel. Before we like vote on that, would it be appropriate to have a brief discussion about the after school program? Yeah. I mean, it, it, if it would be, if you would think it's appropriate. <laughs> I mean, my, my thought had been that I was going to bring up all this. Well, yeah, I think because it's public comment, not your comment. So before we vote, before we vote. Okay. All right, so public comment's up. Oh, I thought it was. I'm sorry. Okay. So public comment's up. Is okay. so it not done? Public comment's up. That's why I tried. I was okay. trying to uh, wait until right, nobody finished. Okay. Despite my inclination to interrupt. Thank you, Marilyn. I appreciate that. Okay. So, if you want to do the special now, I don't know if I can talk much about it. Procedurally, you're okay. So, if we're still in public comment, you are entitled to respond to public comment. Yes. If you're not still in public comment, do you have another section of the meeting for board comment? Yeah. We usually hold business. Old business. Like you can do it. So, if you have a section on old business, if you have a section on board comment, or if you have a section where both Okay. So, okay. so when you move personnel, okay, we'll 
talk about. Right, so if they move personnel, can they, before they vote on personnel? Yeah, you would say, okay. is there any discussion on it before we have our vote? Okay. okay. Yep, perfect. Okay, so we're going to go to uh, curriculum instruction to uh, yes. your, uh, under curriculum instruction, I'd like to invite you to one and two. Second. Nothing was brought to my attention um, by a community member until Marilyn told me that there was something going on on Facebook. So I have received no communication about the snack issue. Uh, but my understanding is that snack will be provided to students that are in need of it. Um, and that um, my understanding, Mr. McIntosh, I just bring it to his attention and he said he is providing snacks for students that need it. Um, and then he's going to look at the se September financials to determine what types of snack that he'll be able to afford for the program. I, I mean, I, because, because the financials were kind of a little bit of in, in a disarray, so he needed some some time to unpack that um, with our new VA to figure out where we stood financially going into the year as well. I appreciate the position that he was in for sure. Um, I don't think that offering snacks to kids who need it is going to work. I think that you're walking down the line saying like, oh, are you on free or reduced lunch? Oh, can you, are you on not on free or reduced lunch but you're hungry yeah. and you don't have any money? I mean, I think this needs to be a universal design where we offer a snack. Yeah, so, so it's not a problem. That's that's an easy fix. We can just tell them to provide snack and we'll, we'll go from there. So that's not a problem. But like I said, it, was, it wasn't brought to my attention by anybody other than uh, Marilyn happened to see it on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And so, but other than that, it wasn't brought to my attention at all for anything. I'm not even sure if it was brought to Colin's attention. Yeah, that's, that's my question. Well, I was going to say, I was going to say it later, but since yeah. you're discussing it now, is that I think it's really important to. In my mind, I kind of stepped back and I said, okay, how did we get here? And we got here because we were spent a year looking at our after school program and concerned that it wasn't solvent, right? That we were losing money and that as a district, we can't put money into it because it's an enterprise business. That's a legal issue. So, and we all know we went and tried outsourcing and then we couldn't come up with an option that we both the board and the community were comfortable with. So we went in house. We went to try again to do it in house. So, I mean, we were lucky to find Colin. We got him, you know, this was the beginning of July when we had no aftercare program, you know, because we didn't have anybody to run it. So he came on board. We got the program started, which is, I think, pretty impressive for a few weeks. Um, and I think now it's going to be time for him to hear feedback, try get the program running, and then let's see what the issues are. Financially, he's trying to, I suspect, he's trying to be careful. 
because he doesn't have the financials going in to see what, what the, uh, I didn't know that, and we gave him that charge, or Christina did, not me, but Christina gave him the charge of doing, figuring out the costs and the salaries and the program, um, and I think, I think it's going to be a work in progress. And I was going to encourage the public to make sure that, not the public, but parents who are thinking, considering aftercare or in sign up for kids for aftercare is communicate with Colin um, as the director. And if obviously there's an issue of concern, I'm going to end up coming back to the superintendent. But I suspect, you know, from, from what I'm hearing, he is being responsive to emails. So I think we need to work with him and give, you know, give him a shout. Yeah. I do agree snack issue is an issue, but, you know. Yeah, no, I mean, as long as we're going to actually, we're going to guarantee a snack, then we're fine. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. I'm not sure how that, my guess is that, like, people contacted him and it, somebody, somebody told folks there's going to be no snack. Right? It's in the handbook. It's in the handbook. Oh, the handbook said no snacks. Okay. Yeah. But yes. again, I so I would encourage anybody to reach out to Mr. McIntosh directly. If, if you don't get um, a helpful response at that point, feel free to email me. That's sort of the good chain of command for that. But like I said, he's been responsive about that. and. And I encourage you, please, and, and reach out to me directly. I have, I have no problem with that. Again, it, it was, I'm not on the Facebook. Um, I don't care to want to be on the Facebook for, for a lot of reasons. So the only way I know if issues are out there is if uh, community members of the board brings it to my attention. So thank you, Marilyn, for letting me know that there was, uh, that this was coming to my attention. And then about five minutes before the board meeting started, an email came in from a parent. So, um, you know, making sure that that chain of communication happens so that we get this, the, the right things. So I do I do appreciate the chain of command and it is very important for parents to, to follow the chain of command and be respectful of that and not go right to a board meeting, you know, when, when something happens that could be resolved with their teacher for sure. But I do think that when there's a policy announced in a handbook, parents probably feel like, you know, calling the director of the preschool part of the uh, after school program is not going to be useful. Absolutely. Yeah. Also, I don't like that policy. You know? No, I know, but just uh, just a friendly reminder to board meetings, an obligation when something is sent out, please review it. I know the handbook is lengthy, but it was sent to the board members for review as well. Remember that was part of our protocol was the rates, how much we were charging, the handbook and everything was going to the board members before we put it out there as well to make sure that um, it was all it was all sound. Um, you know, I take a little bit more of a hands-off approach because it's an enterprise fund, mm -hmm. um, and that was the point of hiring a director. So um, we need to make sure that if there are any issues moving forward, we all work as a united front to make sure that we're doing what's best for the students. My apologies for not noticing the snack issue. My children are not at that age, so it did not come to my attention. Yeah, I just want to say too, it did not come to my attention either, except through the letter from the mayor. So I'm happy to hear this was an easily resolved. Um, and I do think, yeah, I do think I just want a little bit more clarity on the board's role when it comes to policy decision making that at that after school program level, after care level, because it's different from our right. capacities. Right, so if there's no policies, policies that, the policies that regulate the, uh, the child care program are our board policies. So there are no policies just for a child care program. So whatever policies we have, so for example, search and seizure, um, what happens in the event of an emergency, um, you know, all of those, like what, if you go to our website under board and go to board policies, all of those same board policies regulate the child care program as well. So there aren't separate board policies. Uh, so your role is to uh, make sure that when you are reviewing board policies and approving board policies that you think about how the students interact with the school community all day, athletics, extracurricular activities, child care program, things like that. So that would be the board's role. In addition, then you're approving the recommendation of um, information that's coming from the program. So uh, one of the things that I told uh, Marilyn to pass on um, that uh, will happen is finance and facilities. Mr. McIntosh has been invited to attend all of the finance and facility committee meetings. So he'll begin first um, with myself, Mr. Rosa, and Mr. Flanagan to communicate finance and facilities. So he'll be giving monthly reports on the financials. Yeah, we're all getting messages. The public can't hear. Oh, well, I'm, I mean, I'm on and speaking, so I, there's nothing much. Okay, so we'll let our tech who's managing this run this. Um, uh, so the. Um, so Colin will be coming to our finance and facility committee meetings once a month to give financial reports and state of the state addresses, so to speak, of the child care program, which um, the chair of finance and facilities, um, 
Marilyn, will be able to give out to the community. So there will be updates every month, um, which I think will be helpful. It's something he did in his prior role, uh, the same role in another district. So at least they'll be able to provide that. So I think there'll be more transparency because we have somebody that's doing that role to provide it. In the past, we had no one really overseeing it other than the two site managers who weren't really managing it um, to be able, like managing in terms of the financials and all of that for us to be able to provide those updates. Um, so I think moving forward, you'll see that it'll be um, more professionally run and managed in terms of communication back to the board in terms of here's what we're doing, here's how much we're, we're, we're getting, here's our revenue, here's our expenses, here's the programming that we're offering and, and things like that. So um, I think there's there's some great stuff to come. We just have to you know work through the kinks of, of a new a new program that he had basically a month to, to revamp and, and revise. So I know it's a work in progress, but that'll hopefully be helpful moving forward um, for the transparency end of it and the role for the board. Cool, thank okay. you. Yes, yeah, this is new. Yes, this yes. Is, this is new. Yeah. If, if possible, I think it would also be helpful if you could attend an equity and access meeting so that we can kind of discuss issues that, again, may, I think it would be important for him to understand our policies around equity and excellence and how that may um, impact uh, his program. Yeah, I will, I'll invite him and hopefully he'll be able to make it to attend those as well. Okay, 
Um, it's really alarming to hear the Board of Education rewrite what happened with the after school program. To act as if we did not have a program and we did not have program directors and we did not have policies is 100% false. And I can say that because you know, my kid was in the program so I know it existed. I knew who to speak to. Ms. Carla when he was at Irving, Ms. Jackie when he was at Bartle. So this idea that we didn't have a program we needed all new policies is utterly false. The fact is, Dr. Nicosia, based on false information, tried to get us to outsource to freaking Catholic charities of all places. And the board almost went along with it until there was a community pushback. That is what happened. And you all realized that there was going to be a serious legal liability if you went along with your proposal. That is what happened. If there is no snap, that is on your that is at your doorstep. Okay, don't blame it on Mr. McIntosh. Don't blame it on the fact that there was a community fight, which I should add, the administration started. None of us were talking about ASP. We were talking about the fact that our kids can't read in the schools and need more services. You know, and so I just think we need to be really clear about what happened. This administration decided to attack ASP and try to outsource it. We fought back, we won, okay? The idea that we were going to lower Ms. Carla and Ms. Jackie's salaries by $6 an hour is unconscionable. And each of you should be speaking out against that. And again, if there is no snack, that is on all of you to correct. It's not on Mr. McIntosh, it's not on Ms. Carla or Ms. Jackie, it is on you to correct. So I really think we need to stop fighting over the ASP program and also stop rewriting what happened in the last six months. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Seeing none, I make any motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone. Good night.